Welcome back to the Global Observatory. This morning, our guest is Katherine Richardson. Katherine is Vice Dean of the Faculty of Science at the University of Copenhagen and also Chair of the International Scientific Congress for Climate Change. Catherine, welcome to the Global Observatory and thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. In just about every discussion dealing with climate change, one hears scientists being quoted, scientific studies being used, uh, both in favor and against all the issues dealing with climate change. So, since when have scientists been on to climate change? Well, actually, it started in 1896 when a Swedish chemist actually predicted that we would get global warming out of the burning of, of coal. And of course, that was a prediction. You really need to get, we really have to have it start happening, and you have to have enough years' data to be able to say that it really is happening, which is why it's really now within the last 10 or 15 years that the, the evidence has been so strong that it's there, that, that the, the IPCC, which is the UN uh, body looking at this, said that there's over a 90% chance now that, that climate change is caused by human activities. And the scientific information that they're turning to, however, they turn to is hundreds of thousands of years of records of these? Oh, yes, absolutely. It's so exciting because you can actually go back and measure climate from far below when, when uh, or far before people were even here. Humans have been here for 200,000 years, but we can go back and get climate records millions of years back by going into ice cores. And when you take ice cores up, the bubbles in the ice actually show the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere and also it tells the temperature um, by looking at some isotopes. So you can measure what CO2 and greenhouse gases have meant for, for or how they've related to temperature for the last millions of years. So yes, the IPCC, which was started in 1988, they've done four reports. Their job is actually to assess the available scientific data information suggesting whether or not, examining whether or not there is climate change and whether or not humans could ha be having a role in it. They have an incredibly thorough and comprehensive way of doing their review, and they only include material which has already been published and peer-reviewed, which means quality controlled by independent scientists, before they put it into their report. So it's a very, very thorough report. It's made up of people who are nominated by all of the countries who are part of the, of the, of the convention, the Framework Convention on Climate Change, and actually the I, in IPCC means intergovernmental, which means it's also been checked and vetted by the countries involved. Right. So Catherine, the, the, the most recent report of the IPCC came out in the year 2007. Yes. And they came forward with uh, many different conclusions with respect to the effects of our livelihoods, the effect that mankind has on climate change. Right. You just chaired a scientific gathering, a gathering, uh, a big congress of 2,500 scientists that came from all over the world here in Copenhagen last March. Right. How were your findings different or similar to the last IPCC report? Well, the reason we did the report, actually, is just because of the fact that the IPCC is as thorough as it is. It takes a very long time before it can actually get its report out. So the last report in 2007 really doesn't include any research results that have come out within the last five years. So we were a large group of scientists supported by 10 leading universities that got together to try and make a summary of what's the newest information. And basically, the bottom line is, there's good news, but there's also bad news. And the bad news is that the IPCC, everything, things, things are just as serious as the IPCC said, except probably even more so. Things like the rate at which temperature is increasing in the ocean, the rate of sea level rise, it's all going faster than the IPCC actually thought in 2007. So there's very good reason to, it, they simply support and reinforce the conclusions of the IPCC report, all the newer data. Also the fact that impacts are greater than, than was predicted at that point. But the good news, and the good news which came out of the Congress is that we really know very, very much more about how we can solve this problem and that we have the technology at our disposal to, to solve the problem now. So in a way, 
all we're really missing is the political and the public will to do it. So what do you think that means for the next two weeks here? You've provided them this updated scientific analysis and it shows us a pathway forward that through changing our behavior we can solve this challenge. And what do you think that this portends for the next couple of weeks? Well, I think it, I think it portends well. I mean, we always have believed in our society, ever since Plato, that the, the best decisions are made by society when you have access to the newest and the best knowledge and wisdom. And we feel now that the, the, the decision makers have access to the newest scientific knowledge, the best scientific knowledge here on which to, to work on. But this is not a negotiation about science. This is a negotiation about economics and about, about ethics, about helping people to adapt uh, money, moving, moving money to people who, who, who need help to make the transition to a low carbon economy and can't afford to do it themselves. So I think, I think science can't do much more at this point. I think now it's up to the, the economic and the, the political um, discussions that are going to go on. But I'm an optimist. Great. So are we. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us today on the uh, Global Observatory.